This one started as a total different piece than it's going to end up looking like. People in Texas do not like hutches for whatever reason. So I went ahead and removed it and we are using only the bottom of the hutch. It's becoming a buffet in a beautiful new home and we are going with one of my favorite colors as well. Let's see what all we get to do with this one in today's episode of Why Not Redesign. Hey y'all, this is Eliana with Why Not Redesign. Thank you for being here again today. Welcome to those of you who are new to the channel. I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to go ahead and subscribe and turn on your notifications right now so you don't forget. This week I'm working on this used to be China cabinet and is now going to be converted into a buffet. It's going into a brand new house for a family who is going to really appreciate what I'm doing. I'm really, really happy to be doing this because it's not just the first piece that I do for this family. So that's always appreciated. I started as usual by cleaning very well. I do a cleaning before I do my scuff sanding or any repairs because I don't want to, when I'm sanding the piece, kind of work that dirt into the piece again, if you know what I mean. But I use, for my first wipe through, I use just simple Dawn dish soap and hot water. And I am going over the entire piece very, very well to kind of just get all of that dust this week i decided to use a new tool that i've had for a couple of months and for whatever reason i forgot that i had it but these this piece was exactly what i needed to use it on because this has little indentations everywhere so i basically put this brush onto my 3lv drill and it's fabulous because it scrubs all the dirt from all the little nooks and crannies What you see me spraying right there is a, call, it's a product that I use from Dixie Bell Paint Company called White Lightning. It's wonderful because it degreases and it deglosses the entire piece. There is a lot of cleaning to be done on each of these pieces. To me, cleaning is one of the most important things that you will do in the process of painting a piece of furniture. And that is because if you don't clean it well, the paint is not going to adhere well, which is what your ultimate goal is. A lot of uh, companies out there make three-in-one products, and if the piece is not clean well, then it, the paint is not going to adhere well, and none of the uh, products that are into that three-in-one paint are gonna work. Same with either a chalk or a mineral paint, or even if you just use paint from a big box store. If you don't clean it well, your piece is going to fail, no matter what you use on it. I mentioned before I am removing the doors because I'm gonna be spraying them later separately but I am also going to be doing a deep cleaning in all of those little nooks and crannies behind the doors because a lot of dust and dirt can be saved on, in those areas over the years I tape the hinges on the doors because I'm not removing them and I will be I'm covering them so that I'm, I don't paint them either I will be using a gilding wax on them later I'm beginning this cuff sanding of the piece this is extremely important again for adherence of the paint um, I like to do it with a 220 or an, uh, maybe a 180 or a 200 if you find a 200 in your area of sandpaper I am also using um, mud is a Dixie Belt product and basically it's like a spackle this one is tinted brown they also have white and black you can use any of your preference or the one that closest fits your piece um, this is basically a product that is going to sit in any of those deep deep gouges that could be on the piece I scuff sanded it and the piece wasn't really really bad but it had some deeper gouges uh, in the areas where I'm applying this product right now and so I'm just kind of preventing 
they were okay there before because they were not being seen since the piece was really a hutch and it had that other piece, that extra piece on top. But now this is going to be a separate piece, so I don't wanna see any ghosting, which is what I call those little, uh, little indentations. I'm also um, going to go ahead and use a brush in any of these areas that I know I usually have a little hard time getting into with the sprayer. So I'm giving them the first coat by brush and it's just a preference of mine. It's not really something that has to be done. If you are using just a brush to paint your piece, then this will be your first coat anyway. I always do two to three coats depending on the piece and the paint that I'm using. Some paints require three coats because maybe it's a white, usually light co colors do. Dark colors are usually pretty good with just two coats. The product that I'm using is an all-in-one paint and this is Silk by Dixie Bell Paint Company. All-in-one means that it has primer, paint, and top coat included on it so i do not have to use a top coat or a protecting coat if i didn't want to once i'm done with this normally i do it anyway because most people are pretty rough on furniture and if i've talked to my client and asked them what this piece is going to be used for then i rather have that extra assurance for them that the piece is not going to fail and that the product is well protected. The drawers um, had very old hardware, so I'm gonna be using new hardware, but this one specifically is the middle drawer. And uh, you will see that it has a huge hole in the middle, and that is because it had a faux keyhole on it, but it was actually put on there as if it was a piece of hardware. So there's, there was there was a, an actual, like literally a hole. I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but there is a hole. I'll move this piece right there. You see right there, there was a hole in it. And then it had two pieces of, um, two screws on the side where how it was, it was held that way. So that's pretty huge. And I'm using Bondo to repair that and um, to, because I'm not keeping it. Bondo is a two part epoxy and um, you use a hardener to put the product on it or to mix it and put the product on the, on the piece. This, uh, this one is specifically made for wood pieces. There is another one that is kind of gray and is made for automot automotive, but it's also something that you can use on hardware, or I'm sorry, on uh, furniture, because it works just fine. After I apply it, I usually always go back with the same thing that I used to apply it, whether it's a, um, like a popsicle stick, stick in, like in this case, or whatever you use. I remove as much of that bundle before it completely dries so that it's a lot easier to sand it back when it's completely dry. Here I am removing now by hand the uh, mud that I applied earlier onto all of those little gouges. It makes a mess. So I usually have a piece of wet fabric with me some sort of rag and I sent, and I pick it up immediately before it goes everywhere. I also like to use a 220 to 320 uh, sandpaper to remove the mud because that, that doesn't remove it completely, but it does a really good job in leaving everything very soft. As you can see the surrounding of the drawers on the top, that is what I was painting by hand before with the brush. From here, we're gonna move the piece into the spray booth. And here we are in my spray booth. 
Um, this product, uh, again, it's a three in one. So with me applying it the way that it is, I'm basically applying the primer, paint and top coat. Um, I mix it with, with about a maybe 95 to 5% water. This product does not like water very much. And so I think my mixture is at like a 95.5 and really just so that it moves easier and smoother when applied from the sprayer. Liquid um, deglosser and this product is um, perfect to clean and not have to actually rinse anything back. I love it. Here I'm actually applying the top coat. I've already done the two coats of paint. It looks perfect. You, you see that I did the uh, doors on one side and then the drawers are also done right here. And with what I had left of the paint in the canister, I put in my top coat and I'm basically applying three coats of top coat on there. So again, it's for extra protection because I like to do it. It's not something that is definitely required because the paint has the top coat already included. And yes, I did, I applied the, or I added the top coat onto the canister that had paint before, because that also helps deepen the top coat and it doesn't ghost or it doesn't um, glaze the, the top coat on the, on the piece when you're applying it. It just seems like you're applying paint again and it just dries deeper. Right there, you can see that it looks like I'm applying paint again, but it's actually the top coat because it's tinted. Make sure that I get into every single side. And again, I did this three times. As you can see, I do a light sand between each of those final top coats. I moved the piece over to my staging wall and I'm about to put the, drawer, the doors back on it as well and apply the gilding wax on the hardware as is already on the piece. I prefer to do it this way because that way the piece, the, the, the hardware from time to time tends to hang differently if you don't literally sit and take the time to name and you know mark every single thing. So in order for me to avoid that extra time, I get lazy from time to time, y'all, I'm human. So I just tape it and do it this way. It works out really well for me, especially because I'm not a patient person. And if my husband is not around and I, I'm the one who has to do this, then I just find the whatever works for me and this is what works for me. If you notice, I, I put the hardware on the drawers and I change it, like I said, but it's a little bit different than the hardware that, it, that was existing on the doors. And I didn't have a match for those, so we're gonna go with the door hardware. And with gilding wax, I'm just gonna marry everything. The uh, new hardware is gold, but it's a different gold. The hardware on the hinges, as you see, was different. So I am marrying everything with Dixie Bell's gilding wax and gold. And I apply it even on the existing hardware of the doors to again, make sure that they all look cohesive. You can use a card, you can use some tape, you can choose to tape around that and just do it that way. I just got a piece of paper. I've been, I've been doing this for a long time, so it's easy for me. And put it behind each of the pieces. Here's another angle. And it was really hard to, to show that, so I apologize that the picture is not the greatest but um, that's easy for me that way. And I just use a little painter's brush. 
here's me marrying the gold hardware it's kind of hard to see in the angle that i'm doing it i'm trying to do two things at the same time and i'm not great at it however um you get the idea i overdid it as you can see right there so i am using um an oil based product i'm using big, Ma big mama's butter to basically remove that little piece right there if you apply anything with oil you remove it with oil so big mama's butter is an, an oil base um smell good product is what i call it because it smells delicious but it's basically like a furniture balm and i was applying it onto the drawers and inside the cabinet anyway so it's pretty easy to just use that with the gilding wax and remove it and that way right there you can see that's the new and this is the old look new and old and then marrying everything that has to be done right there but you'll see look at the bottom one the bottom one and the middle and the top right handle they'll look the same so once again y'all here's this piece it was dirty it was from my stash i've had it for quite some time my customer chose it and this is my new redesign deep sea seems to be the beautiful blue that this piece needed and my customer chose the right color for it it's going into her home it's going to be under her tv but it's going to be you also use as a coffee station in her bedroom so it will be perfect the gold is just the right amount of bling that he needed and this is exactly what she wanted I'm very happy with the result. You guys, again, make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications and let me know in comments what you think of this piece. I really appreciate your time today and always, and I will see you again next week. Bye.